you very much, Michael. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, okay, let me go ahead and share the screen. Um, so you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, we can see it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Um, okay, hello, uh, everyone. Um, this is uh, I'm Andres Diaz Pinto, a uh, technical marketing engineer at, at NVIDIA. Um, I'm going to talk about what is a Monai label, everything related to that. And, and, and hopefully, if we have some time at the end, um, I'm going to show you a couple of models that we have, we have been, we have trained using Monai label and, and, and also discuss a bit about this, this library. Okay. Um, so, first, uh, I'll always like to um, mention that this is a project that uh, comes out of a joint effort collaboration between NVIDIA, uh, King's College London, and the London AI Centre. Uh, so, this is the agenda I'm going to follow for, for this presentation. So, we'll briefly discuss what is Monai Label uh, and then um, talk about what it, why we bother using Monai Label uh, and the main persona that we are aiming to. Uh, and, and then um, I'm going to show you with the with an example data set how you can create a Monai Label app and, and train on, on, on that data set. Um, briefly, I'll discuss what is what are the active learning strategies that we have available in Monai Label. And finally, some um, radiology use cases and, and, and the demo on, on running on a local local computer with the with the slice. So what is Monai Label? Basically, essentially, it's a tool that enables us to um, build AI annotation model, right? So that's the that's the main purpose. So this means that uh, you can create AI models or you can train and run inference on that using um, a single network or multiple networks. So we call it single stage or multiple stage uh, deep learning models. I'm going to show you in the demo um, a couple of, of those cases. Um, so you can do that easily in Monai Label. Uh, Monai Label also includes active learning strategies. So the idea is basically that you can improve the model performance uh, while you annotate the data sets. Everything is written in Python, so you can, with a simple pip install Monai Label, you can uh, run and play with the, with the Monai Label environment. Um, we have developed as well different viewers for different applications. So if you have uh, radiology use cases, this means CT, MR images, you download the radiology app and, and, and run inference using the reference implementation that we have with 3D slicer or OHIP. Right? If you have a histopathological image, you want to annotate that you either use digital slide archive as a viewer or the QPath uh, viewer. And the same for endoscopy. So you have the um, CVAT that can communicate with the Monai label server and, and annotate the data set and train the models. So here I showed a thumbnails of the different applications that we support in Monai label. So radiology is the, one of the most um, common use case that we have, uh, but we also have pathology, uh, endoscopy, and the bundle that um, Michael just mentioned. So you can think of a bundle as, as the it's basically a specification of um, deep learning models that you, you create in, in Monai uh, and use it in Monai deploy or using it in, in Monai label, right? It's, it's, it is sort of like, it's sort of like a bridge between the different uh, libraries in, in, in Monai. So you can run that. You can also run Monai bundles in Monai label. Um, so here we can see the structure of Monai label. Uh, in essence, it's a server client system. Right. We offer an API to communicate with the server, but but this is uh, very important. We don't uh, so you can run Monai Label without starting the server. So this there is a main pipe that you can use within the Radiology app or, or any app uh, and run it serverless in a serverless mode. So that that means you in a, in in the terminal you can run Python main main dot py uh, the main file being in the within the Radiology app or any app, and then you specify the the path where the images are uh, to run inference or to run training on that, uh, you can do that as well. So that, that's a parenthesis. Um, but uh, most of the cases we use it as a server, Monai label, and that uh, communicates with the different clients that we offer. So if you work with the 3D slicer, there is a plugin for 3D slicer 
the same for, for QPath and, and the same for uh, CVAT, right? Um, CVAT and QPath are, uh, say, for 2D um, annotations. They are special 2D um, images because um, histopathological images in general are, are quite big, and, and, and CVAT is for 2D, but um, but is most of the cases is for, for videos. Right? So you consider 2D uh, the, the frame, one frame of the video. Anyway, so th those are the, the plugins that we have created for, for the users to interact with the monolithic server. And there is also the studies of how we manage, how we store and, and, and manage the different files. So you can, if you have a, a DICOM files, say for the radiology app, you can use the DICOM web uh, server or DICOM web standard to communicate with the monolithic server. Or if you have Nifty files or NRRT files for the radiology application, you can use the local file archive, put the folders in a, or put the files into a folder and, and start the monolithic server to annotate the images. Um, in the monolithic server, we have we yeah, we have the different apps: radiology, pathology, endoscopy, monolithic bundle. But we also have the active learning strategies and the scribbles based algorithm. So this is a um, quick view of what the monolithic uh, plugin in in Slicer. Uh, one of the um, um, there are many reasons actually to create a Monai um, label plugin in Slicer is, is basically because it's, it's, a, it's very popular, the viewer. Uh, it has a supportive community. There are a lot of people working on, on, on this, on this uh, platform. Um, um, it's user friendly. You have many functionalities. It's quite mature and stable. So that's, that's the main reason I'm going to demo later uh, using Slicer and Monai label. Um, the other plugin that we have for radiology is OHIF. Um, it has a beautiful interface. It works on the browser. Um, you don't need to install anything, um, but uh, you cannot use the local file archive to install to, to store the images. You need to have a Daikon web server. Uh, one of the Daikon web server that you can use is Ortank. So you start the Ortank, you place the Daikon images there, start the monolithic web server, and annotate the images using OHIF. So that's a that's a um, setup that you can use. Um, so why why we should bother uh, using one label? And, and essentially, there are two main personas here. So the, the one is the research uh, perspective or the research persona, which is uh, the person that wants to you know annotate, uh, create new annotation methods. Right? Uh, he or she wants to you know, create new networks uh, or test new networks on the data set that they have. Uh, they want to implement new active learning techniques or test it, or, or they want to test the ones that are, uh, are already available in MonoLibre, right? Um, anything that they want to do, you know, play with the different deep learning models, um, convolutional based, um, uh, transformer based, or any other that is, that is available in PyTorch or Monai. So that's the research perspective. Uh, the clinician or in perspective, the clinician user in our research settings, they, they, they want to you know, they reduce the time and effort uh, annotating data set. And for that, they use usually the one of the viewers that we provide, either 3D slicer or OHIF, uh, if they are pathologies, you know, PSA, QPath, or, or endoscopy, we, we propose CVAT. Okay, so th those are the two personas that we are, we are aiming to. Next, I'm going to show you how, how we can create a Monai label app. Uh, and in this case, I want to um, first give, give you a context to so the, the structure of the radiology app. Uh, this can be extrapolated to the other applications, right? Uh, but let's, let's say this example, let's assume that you are working on a radiology application, a radiology task, and, and you want to know how a Monai label application is structured. So here, you see the, the structure of the radiology app, uh, but again, this applies to the other, okay? Uh, so you have first the main file that I mentioned early um, before. So the main.py, you have the main function that you can use to run the application or the model without starting the server, right? So that's one way to do it. That, that, that's one thing that you can um, do with the main file, right? Uh, in that, in, in the main.py, we instantiate the, the infer class, the trainer class, basically 
everything that all the structure of, of, of the application. There is inside the radiology app, there is another folder which, which is lib or light. Uh, inside that, we have the configs uh, files, the inference files, and the trainer files. Um, so if you want to train a model um, from scratch, or you want to say, uh, I want to take this number, this X number of labels, uh, and, and the labels are, say, liver, uh, spleen, and kidneys. So we have four labels. Uh, where I should put the labels, where I should define. So those label names and the indexes should be defined in the configs file. Hopefully, this will be clear at the end of the presentation. I'm going to provide more details for that. But essentially, in the configs file, you define the label names, the number of labels that you want to um, segment. You define the network architecture. You define the image resolution of the spacing, uh, the ROI size, and whether you want to fine tune a model or train from scratch. Okay. Um, the, I highlight the label names and indexes, which is the, the only thing that you need to, to, to care, actually. So if you, don't, if you don't want to play with any network, there is one by default. Uh, ideally, is the, the best one that we propose. Uh, but you can definitely change. You get, there are multiple, uh, multiple networks uh, implemented in Monai. Um, and you can also customize the network as well. You can do many things there in the configs file. Inference and trainers, basically, uh, it contains the, in inference contains the transforms that you apply to the images before you perform inference. For the training, in the trainers file, it's the same. So you define the transformations that you use to do that augmentation. And also you define the, the custom validation speed if you want to define a custom validation speed. Or if you want to just to use a percentage of the training set, you just leave it by default, which is 20%. Again, so this is, I provide lots of details here, but the, the only thing that you need to change is label names and index, right? And, and run and run the Monai label. That's the bit, that's the context of the, the structure. So the next step, um, so the first, the very first step is you um, define where, what is the application that I want to use, right? So I said before the radiology app, but you may want to use another app. You want to use the pathology, or you want to use the um, Monai bundle or endoscopy, right? Um, so you define that the first thing is what type of data set I'm using. Uh, and then based on that, you define which application you have. Let's say I'm, I'm working with the radiology app and I want to you know, train a model using um, the whole body CT segmentation um, data set or the total segmentator data set. Originally, this data set is structured um, as is shown here on the, on the left picture. You see the total segmentator data set has folders. Each folder represents a case or a patient, right? Patient name. And then inside that folder, you have the CT file and another folder containing all the annotations that they have created for each patient. In total, they have 104 annotations per patient. So you have 104 uh, files each one containing one segment, right? So that's the original structure. In order to use Monai label and to train a model using this data set, a Monai label model using this data set, you need to organize the data set as is shown on the right hand side. Right? So you see the Monai label organization, and, and it's basically you have a folder. Inside that folder, you have all the CT files, right? Name by patient or just assigning a number. And inside that folder, you also have the labels folder and the final folder. Final means basically, and we call it maybe, maybe it's not the best name, but it's the name to put uh, where it, in the name of the folder where you put the uh, ground truth in annotations. But the ground truth annotations should be in a single file. So the if you want to use the total segmentator data set to train a model in Monai label, you need to merge those uh, annotations into a single file. So each file for the annotation has the same name as the CT in the, in the main, in the parent folder, okay? I hope uh, that, that that's, that's a bit clear, but if, if not, please, please ask. So we have, um, um, there is a, a script that basically merges the, the segmentation of the mask. You don't need, you don't need to worry about that. There, there is the, the script available either in the total segmentator repository or in, in the full CT segmentation branch in, in, in the Monai label repository. Um, yeah, so that, that allows you to merge all the files into a single one, right? 
But let's say uh, I want to, instead of annotating 104 segments, because I don't, I don't need all those segments, but I, I really want to use the total segmentator that I say, you can still do that. You can still say, I want to only segment 24 out of 104, or I want to notate only two or three or only one, right? Any number. So the only thing is you go to the, again, to the config file, segmentation.py, define the label names, right? Spleen, kidney right, kidney left, gallbladder, liver, stomach, any, any label that you want to notate from, from the 104, and you put the index, the original number that is associated to that segment, right? You will, you will have a dictionary in the total segmentator data set. You have a dictionary that shows the number associated to that, uh, to that um, label name, okay? I'm going to show you how we train a, a whole body CT segmentation model in Monai label using this data set. And we, of, we also train a model only to predict 24 segments, the ones that I'm showing here, okay? Um, yeah, with, with regard to the active learning strategies, um, we have a couple of those uh, active learning strategies. Both of them are, are based on, on uncertainty. Uh, and you can think um, uh, active learning strategy is basically uh, a selection system, right? In which the algorithm that, uh, chooses the data that the deep learning model wants to learn from, right? So you, the deep learning model that is pre-trained will sort the unlabeled data set from, from the most difficult one to the less difficult one, right? So every time that the user wants to update data set, the system will send the most difficult one from, from it, the model perspective, right? Based on the uncertainty that we compute on, on those annotation, on, on those images. And once the expert sent the annotation, the model will be uh, retrained, right? And, and the idea is that the, the, the model gets better and better every time that the user provides more annotation. That's the idea. We have again. We have two annotation, two active learning strategies uh, that uh, computes the uncertainty, the electronic uncertainty, and the epistemic uncertainty. Okay. Um, there is now. Now I, I want to discuss the different radiology use cases that we have uh, trained in in Monai label and, and and also show you the different um, say technical details and the number of annotations that we uh, that we use to train those those models. So uh, I'm going to start with um, a lung, lung segmentation and lung and airway segmentation. For this task, we have uh, three labels, three segments, uh, left lung, uh, right lung, and, and airway. So th those are the, the segments that we have. Uh, and for this model, we use the task OC lung from the medical segmentation decathlon uh, data set. Um, the task doesn't have um, annotations, but um, Dr. Rudolph, in, in, uh, as part of the Slicer Hackathon, uh, is, a, is a clinician for Switzerland. He annotated 87 data set, 87, 87 volumes. And we use that to train a model that is based on a vanilla unit using a patch size of 128 AQ. So you see it's only 87, uh, and it already performs quite, quite decent. Um, uh, there are there are more there are more um, videos also showing the performance of this model in, in, in previous uh, workshops. But yeah, so th this is one model. The other model is the verse, uh, sorry, spine and vertebra segmentation. And for this, we use the verse data set, the vertebra segmentation data set. Uh, only a portion of that, uh, just to show you the initial performance of that. Uh, we use sixty annotated volumes to to train the the um, spine and vertebra segmentation model. Uh, oh, I forgot to say the detail of this. So this is a single single stage model. It's a single unit, right? Uh, and in this case, uh, the, the the interesting thing is uh, we use a multi stage approach to train uh, to to get the vertebral segmentations uh, out of the CT images. And uh, multi stage exactly means three stages. So we have the first stage, which is the localization spine, and once we have the spine localized, we mm, Get compute the centroids of the of the um, different vertebras, and the last stage is basically um, segmentation of each vertebra. Okay, so we have three three uh, stages there. Uh, the ROI size for the different stages is ninety six cube. Um, we use uh, twenty four segments, twenty four labels, which is 
the typical number of uh, vertebras that a human has. There are there are some people that have um, more than more than 24, 25, or 26, uh, but in general we have 24 vertebras. Um, yeah, so th those are the details for the spine and vertebra segmentation. Um, here we also train a whole body CT segmentation model using the total segmentator data set. Uh, in this case, uh, we use the whole data set, uh, 1,200 uh, annotated volumes. In this case, we have 104 annotations, 104 segments. Sorry. Uh, and we use a single stage network. We didn't use more than one network, just one that predicts the 104 segments. Um, and for this, we use the SecRestNet uh, architecture. Uh, here, you can download the radiology app you want to try locally on your computer and the command that you can uh, use to, to start the server. So when I label start server, point to the app, uh, point to the studies that you want to annotate, or just point to a, an, an entity folder and play with the sample data set in slicing. Specify the models, segmentation, full CT, and, and you should be able to, to get segmentations on, on any data set. Um, the other model that, that we uh, train is uh, using the same, the same data set, total segmentator data set, but in this case, we only use a, a portion of that, 400 volumes, and we use a portion of the segments just to show you how you can easily retrain or get a model for the um, organ that you want to train on. So you want to focus specifically on the, on the, on the lungs. You specify only lungs and train from a scratch model. Um, using the Secrest net, uh, and I, I can tell you the, the performance is, is, is great because basically because of the number of images that we have, right? Uh, this is the, the one of the, of the um, keys to, to get a decent deep learning model, more data set, annotated data set. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is the whole brain segmentation model uh, bundle that is available in the model zoo, so you can, um, get that model in, in Slicer uh, uh, by basically starting the monolithic server on, on that bundle. This model was trained on T1 weighted MR images. Uh, so you should be able to run inference on that, on, on, on those type of images using this uh, monolithic bundle. Uh, and this is connected to the uh, work that uh, the Neurosurgical Atlas has uh, been doing for uh, modeling the brain tumor and brain deformation based on, on, on MR images. Uh, the idea of, of, of this is uh, basically they, they, have using, they have been using Monai label to uh, annotate the, the different brain MR images, right, to create a, a virtual twin of, the, of each patient. And, and once they create the digital twin of that, uh, they put that brain, uh, digital uh, brain of each patient, right, into the digital uh, operating room so um, they can basically navigate uh, the brain to find the best uh, or the yeah, less harmful uh, path to remove the tumor, right? Uh, so it's a really, really exciting um, uh, work. And, and, and yeah, it combines different technologies such as Omniverse as well. Very nice. So I don't know if, if there are questions, otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll move to the, to, Short demo that I I prepared. Um, I don't know. If, um, yeah. So there's a few questions here that we can go over. They actually just came in in the last like two three minutes. So um, I'll just kind of read through a few of them. Um, this one asks: Is there a difference in performance when using sliding window infer instead of basic infer for Monai label? I imagine that when using sliding windows, the guidance signals from the clicks scribbles would only be visible in certain patches. So I guess I guess the question is um, because it, th there is a, here a context. So sliding window is a type of, of uh, infer that you um, uh, use to instead of performing inference on the whole volume, you perform inference on 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 a window that is uh, moving through the image to the volume, right? I guess the question that comes here is um, sliding window applied to interactive annotation models. Yeah, right, which is a bit more complicated because yeah. you need to. Yeah, you need to create uh, windows or uh, interactions per window, right? Um, the sliding window, we have most of the segmentation models that we have in MonoLabel, except for the deep edit, are based on sliding windows, right? 
because they are faster. Uh, they are based instead of the whole volume, they are based on, on, on windows or an ROI that is moving around the image, right? Or over the image. Um, yeah, the question of sliding window with an interactive model uh, that's, that's not yet implemented in, in Monai Label. That would be amazing if we have some contribution for that. Um, you know, sort of a deep edit with a, a sliding window base, basically, right? That, that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that, oh. the, the difference is basically if you use the deep edit, you need to fit the whole volume into the GPU. If you use the sliding window imper or the segmentation model, you don't need to fit the, the, the whole image. You fit different patches. That's the yeah. one advantage. Yeah. Is, is there um, yeah, so a few more. So all the release, uh, they asked what if all the released models use SIG ResNet as the base or whether we've tested it with something like Swin Unit or? Uh, very good question. No, we, we, we use the SIG ResNet, but there is nothing that blocks you to, to, to try the Swin Unit. We have uh, in Monai, um, you can out of the box just put the Swin Unit and retrain the whole body CT segmentation model and see how that goes, right? It should it should perform very, very well as well. This I, I don't I don't I don't doubt. But I uh, for this particular use case for the um the whole body CT segmentation I use the sec resnet and, and a simple sec resnet. So that's not um cool. okay the, uh, another one asked about if you could talk about sort of the the latency between the interaction and the inference. Yeah, that, that, that depends a lot on the, on the hardware that you have. And also, if you have the server in the same, in the same computer where you have the viewer, um, yeah. You can also think about in making the inference much more, say, fast or, or speed up the inference by maybe implementing one of the networks in Triton, right? Combine the technology, you know, the PyTorch module, PyTorch model in, in Triton, so that will speed up the inference as well. So that, that would be more on, 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 on how you, um, uh, say, speed up the, the, the inference. But I don't know exactly what, it, what is the, the, the times or the latency that um, the person that asks the question is, is experienced. Yeah, I think they were just generally asking. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think, you, I think you covered it well enough that I, there's so many different factors where, I, where if you have a, a, a higher end GPU, the time for inference is going to be shorter. So by the time you click, get the inference to come back. Um, if you're running on a three or four gen old card, uh, depending on the model, it may be. I don't again, we don't have the necessarily the benchmarks for it off the top uh, of our head, but it'll be slower for the interactions. The other big thing is the first click through that you send through is always slower. Yeah. Because it has to cache it. So it'll cache it on the first one. And then secondary clicks and secondary um, will be faster because it's already cached for the second one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding me that, that that's a very good point. Yeah, you, you, the first the first inference always always takes a bit more, more of time. But uh, because it's basically caching the, the a model into the GPU. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. This person asks, is training performed only on patches containing clicks and scribbles, or do you also include patches without any interaction? Specifically, for the models that I show, uh, the whole body CT segmentation model is, is a simple segmentation model. That means there is no interaction here. The interaction comes from the slicer uh, after you get the prediction. I'm going to show you how you can modify the predictions. But there is no input to the network to, to train I mean, there's no interact, interaction to the network to train the whole body CT segmentation. This is specifically for these models. In, in the radiology app, you have different models. You have deep edit, deep grow. Those are interact, interaction-based. But the ones that I train, they are basically standard segmentation models, no interaction. OK? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Um, someone also asked, and they, they actually messaged to me directly, um, but they asked about Monai and Clara and the difference between Monai and NVIDIA Clara. So I can answer that sort of generally um, because it applies more than just to Monai label. Um, Monai is, they asked whether it replaced NVIDIA Clara. And the answer is, yeah, we, we basically point people now over at Monai. So NVIDIA Clara was around. And, and if, you, if you've used Monai, oh, sorry, if you've used Clara train or Clara deploy, about a year or two years ago, um, those just recently got deprecated and are no longer available for downloading on NGC. 
And so now we point people at, if you're using Claire Train, you use Monai Core. Um, in Monai Core or in Claire Train, there was AIAA, AI Assisted Annotation. That's Monai Label. And then if you have Claire Deploy, that's now Monai Deploy. Um, and actually, right at the end of Clara Train, for instance, 4.0 had Monai Core integration and 4.1, I think, had Monai Label integration into it as well near the end there. But it is sort of the equivalent of if you were using Clara Train, Clara Deploy is to go over to um, Monai. And then there are also different offerings, like we'll have AWS talk later um, on their deployment of things that are in Monai. NVIDIA also has things that are in Monai. A lot of a lot of different CSPs and places are starting to, to take Monai and integrate it into their own workflows and things. So you can kind of pick and choose if you use one particular service and they already have the integration and hopefully they do. That makes it really nice as well. Um, and we're seeing also integration into other vendors like um, like Flywheel and Nuance is integrating with Monai Deploy and there's a lot of places around that are kind of taking it and integrating and, and bringing it into their product as well. But that's all again on the Monai side of things. Um, no longer the NVIDIA Clara sort of piece for medical imaging, at least. There is still sort of NVIDIA Clara, but for not uh, Clara train, Clara deploy stuff. Uh, so two more questions. Um, one person asked, how does the inference writer for Monai label compare to the writer for Monai core and how when saving masks, would you know you have it in the right orientation? That's a very good question, actually. Uh, so we have in, in Monai label, um, all the transforms that we use, um, say cropping or orientation or spacing, they, they can be inverted. So we have, uh, after we get the prediction, we apply the invert transforms of the, of the ones that we can, and we, return the predictions to the original orientation, to the original spacing, and we crop the image, we return it to the original size, right? Um, so this is one thing, uh, and the other we have, uh, this is basically inferred transforms. And we have uh, another part of the, say, after prediction, we, we call it post uh, transforms, that basically is transforming or returning the prediction into the original space, original orientation, and original size. Okay. So you can visualize that in Slicer uh, properly. And the same for the writer. So before you write the prediction, you, you uh, get the, the prediction in the same size, orientation, and everything. Okay. Okay. And then one last one, someone was asking about sort of the dice and ground truths for the data set. I think the models that you were showing that you, you had there, what is sort of the, the performance of those models overall? Very good. Um, so the, it, it depends on the data set that you use. It depends on, on how you define the validation set, right? Um, so I, I, I can, let me reshare the screen so you see. And so I don't, the idea of uh, the models that I show is not, where is it? you see my screen again, right? Yeah. Excellent. So for instance, for this model that I have only 87 annotations, uh, I, I use 10% of the of the um of, of the training set to, to check how the model was performing, right? But 10% is like nine nine images to validate that. So uh if I remember correctly, it was like 80% that's a score. But the, you know, validating a, a model, you you should do it thoroughly, right? So you need to define a proper data set to uh, to say that the model is performing well. It's not computing a dice score, a number, and say my model is 80 or 90 percent, but on a, on a data set that is sort of homogeneous. Right? So the same for this. I, I didn't use the whole data set. I just wanted to show that you can easily train single stage and multi-stage. So our purpose was not to, to beat off the state of the art, but rather to show that there is a platform that allows you to do that. Uh, the same for this. Uh, for this, I, I keep track of the of the dice score and we got around 85% uh, using a single segresnet. Um, but again, so this is uh, using 10% of the data set. Uh, I think I have a slide that I show uh, that I show all the details of how, how I train this model. Um, so one again the key message here is we have a platform, Monai label. It allows you to play with any 
network that is implemented in PyTorch or Monai out of the box. You can easily change that. Um, thanks to this, um, you know, good data set, very good data set, and the total cement data, you can train multiple models and, and, and play with the different pre transforms or, or the transformation that you use to do that augmentation, uh, define your own validation set, and, and, and keep track of that, right? Uh, again, for this, I, I didn't even keep track of that, but it was like around 75 using 40, I mean, 10 percent of the of the of the uh, training samples. Uh, but again, is just to show uh, the flexibility of Monalable and, and the power of, uh, of this platform in combined with Slicer and and, and Ohi, if you want to to use Ohi. Um, I hope that that answer uh, question. Uh, I think that was great. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, we can go on to the demo. And then if we have any other questions, we might have a, a bit of Q&A at the very end. Super. Um, cool. Let me share the screen again. So I have prepared uh, three models um, for you to, to, to see. Um, so the first thing is definitely uh, start the Monai label server. Um, but before that, uh, you need to either use the Docker container that uh, has the uh, setup for the Monai label or in create a Python virtual environment and install Monai label, right? Um, so once, so that, that's one bit. Let's say I want to start the server on, on um, yeah, let's, let's, do, let's do this. Let's start for the, on the, on the, on the 24 segments. So, <coughs> sorry. So how are you starting the server here? So I um, basically, Monai label, start the server, I specify the application. In this case, I'm using the radiology app for 24 segments. Uh, you can put it any name, actually. But I'm using a radiology app-based uh, application. And I specify here a, a bunch of images from the total segmentator data set, basically a folder where uh, I have my test uh, images. And then I specify the model that I'm going to use, in this case, the segmentation model. So one person in the audience was asking about the different models in the, in the radiology app. You can use deep edit, you can use um, deep grow. Uh, if you retrain the models, those models in, in the total segmentator data set, you can, you can also use that as well. So in this case, I just wanted to go simpler and, and, and use the segmentation model, single, single network, and try to, to start the server on that. So once I start the server, you can you can check that the server is up and running um, by going to the 3D slicer, uh, download the Monai label plugin. So you just go to here and extension manager, and uh, within the extension manager you search for Monai label and then uh, connect. You know, download Monai label. Uh, um, Andres, it's only showing your terminal store. Are you up? Do you have 3D oh. slicer up right now? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So uh, very good. I need to reshare the, the, the whole. Um, oh, okay. Yes, because I was sharing only the terminal. That, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Um, just one second. Let me stop and share. Uh, here we go. What about now? There we go. Yep, we see and, it. Uh, you see Slicer? Yeah. Excellent. So I was saying, once once you start start the server, you go to Slicer. I already installed Monai label here, but if you want, you just download 3D Slicer, uh, go to View uh, Extension Manager, and Extension Manager you search for Monai label, and you will have the Monai label plugin. If it doesn't appear here, just go to Modules and search for Monai label, and you will have Monai label there. Switch to Module. So I have. This is the uh, Monai label module for 3D Slicer. Uh, it has different tabs, um, but one of the important ones is uh, the space to put the IP address where my Monai label server is up and running. Because I am running everything in my local computer, I have, um, you can either type localhost or 127.0.0.1, and the port that you are using by default is 8000, and you connect to the server. So once you connect to the server, you, you will see that the next sample button is activated, right? Uh, but let's say, let, let's explain from the, from the beginning. So you have different tabs, right? So you have the options. If you don't see the options tab, 
it is because it's not activated and then you need to go to edit application settings, edit application settings, and then when I label, and then here developer mode. If you don't see the options, it's because you don't have this activated. Again, there is edit application settings when I label. Okay. Um, so once you activate that, you restart a slicer and you will see the options here. And the options basically show the uh, hyperparameters to train or the hyperparameters to do inference. Okay. Uh, the active learning bit. So this tab contains or shows you the, the strategy that you're using to do active learning. In this case, I'm using um, vanilla active learning strategy, uh, which is the random. So the model will, will choose randomly from the label images uh, to show me one, one sample here. Um, the different models that I have uh, activated, I only activate one when I start the server. So you will see that one. We include uh, or embed cement editor, which is this one, the same in Slicer. We embed it here for, to facilitate things. And the auto cementation is also uh, available here in, in, in the automatic cementation mode. Okay. Um, then um, let's go ahead and fetch an example. So I have a pre chain model. On, on 24 segments, train on, on, on the total cementator data set only for 24 segments. So I can run, I can run inference on that and see how, how that goes. So you, if you go to the logs, you will see that the system is using the pre-transforms, right? So you load the image, um, ensure channel space, or, or do the orientation space in normalized intensity. And in total 11 seconds, you will have the uh, prediction of the uh, 24 segments on, on, on any, any data set, right? So you can visualize here, you go to segment editor, you can see in 3D the, the, um, the annotations of, on 24 segments, right? I'm going to show you later the, the, the whole body city segmentation model, but this is only for, for 24. So let's say, uh, I mean, this is quite, quite good already, but let's say, and I'm not an extra clinician, but let's say this, this organ, um, uh, you know, the uh, right uh, kidney uh, is not perfect. So I need to, you know, modify so you can uh, select right kidney and, and modify that. They so say, you know, this is also part of the, of the kidney. So I modify that, um, right? And say, this is good, uh, but this is, this is not, this is actually not part of the, of the kidney. I don't know, just, you know, so this, in this way you modify the predictions. And, and once you modify the prediction, you say, okay, I'm, uh, the model is ready to be retrained, right? Because I already see that the uh, segments are, the, the others are, are okay. So I submit the label. So once I submit the label, you will see that uh, out of the, the seven samples that I have as a test set, one is annotated. So I can use one to retrain the model, right? And if I click here on retrain, I basically retrain the model using the default hyperparameters that I have here for retraining the model, which means maximum 50 epochs. I can increase the number of epochs, 5,500. Uh, the validation speaks for the percentage that I'm going to use based on the training set, which percentage I'm going to use to, to validate the model, right? You can also go to the trainer's file and define your own and a separate validation set that can, that can also be possible in one I label. Um, and that's, that's pretty much so I can, I can retrain the model, right? So I can retain the model using one, um, one image only, right? So in this case, you see is training has started uh, um, and, and you will see that it's running one epoch after uh, it's already, you see, it, it already sees, show you the, the accuracy uh, on, on, on that because I don't have a validation set. Or so it's, on, it's showing me the accuracy on the on, on the training set, which is one only one sample. Okay. So this is uh this is on the 24 segment. Let's let's stop the training here um, and go to the another sample which is the total um, or whole body CT segmentation which is this um let me see this one. Yeah so it's exactly the same uh this I can I can share the link to download the radiology uh put this full CT uh, um, and the, the model that I, I just call it segmentation underscore full underscore CT. So you start the server there. 
and reload, reconnect, fetch the next sample, right? Um, and run inference on this. So this is the 100, 104 segments. Um, the size of this image is, is, is a bit, um, let me see how, how is the size of the image. It's 243, 243, 409. So it has more than 400 slices. And uh, is using the sliding window inferior with a patch size of 96. And, and, and let's see how, how the performance is on, 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 on the whole body CT segmentation. So you see, it took me around uh, 30 seconds to run using single ResNet, single sec ResNet uh, to run inference on this. So you can also uh, visualize this in 3D, right? And by the way, so this is the model uh, working on, on 1.5 millimeters. So I, I, I trained two models, one for 1.5 and, and, and another for two millimeters. But again, the flexibility of one enable is that you can change the network. You say, I want to play with the CMU network, or I want to change the resolution because the images that I'm, um, I have are has, have much better resolution, say 0 0.6 or 0 0.7, right? Uh, just to let you know, it will take more resources, of course, because the images will be much bigger. Um, and, but yeah, you can change the network, you can change the, the spacing uh, very easily. And, and retrain the network. So just to show you how the, the robustness of this model, uh, let me let me clean this and close the scene and, and and get a sample data set from you know, let's 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 say the CT, go to my label and perform inference on that. So this this asks me if if I want to send the image to the server to run inference. I say okay, uh, it will it will send the, the the image to the server and run inference on 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 that. Um, So this, uh, the, the size of this image is, let's see, 512, 512, uh, 139 slices, uh, sliding window inferior, uh, running the post transform for the people that ask um, for the spacing and orientation. So I run that, and this took me 20 seconds to run inference on this image, right? So you can see um, the, inference on this on this on, on a sample data set from slice it you can bring your you any data set any ct image right to segment 104 organs and lastly just to finalize just let me let me stop this server and show you the vertebra segmentation model uh, that is also a good a, a good model that it was trained on Versi is is not is not as robust as as the whole body CT segmentation, essentially because of the number of images that we use to train the model, right? Uh, but it's a, it's a good use case to 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 show. Um, let me see. So the vertebra segmentation model or the spine we have multiple stages: localization spine, localization vertebra, and vertebra pipeline. Localization spine is basically a, a network that localizes the spine. So here I'm running inference using the localization spine just to show you how the model localizes the spine. But you don't need to, to run that. You, the, the only thing that you care is I want to segment the whole spine or the all, all vertebras. So you run the, the vertebra pipeline or, so you see uh, the uh, spine was localized here. Uh, Right. So I don't need the segmentation to be perfect. I just want to uh, the model to know where the, the spine is located. So the next step, the next step uh, crops the image around the, the, the spine and segments the different vertebrates. Right. So if I run if I run uh, localization vertebra, it will localize the vertebra uh, in, and, and it will assign a label to each uh, to each one. So the size of this image is 512, 512, 4, 460. Uh, so it, take, it will take, um, like, say, 30 to 40 seconds. Um, okay. 
really quickly on just while we kind of wait for this to to go mm -hmm. Someone was asking, when you retrain the layers, do you only retrain the last layers of the network when you add new or refine the labels, or do you retrain the whole thing? Uh, the very good point. A very, very good question. Actually, yeah, this is this is something that we, yeah, short answer is uh, we retrain the whole network. Right? Uh, you can you can change the learning rate, so the changes in the in, in the layers are small. If you think that the data set is, is similar to the one that you are retraining, the, the, the one that you use to retain the model. Uh, but yeah, we modify all the layers. One thing that I'm that we are we Monai label community are working on is to get a sort of image net, right? And I say in quotes, image net, because it's not <laughs> an image net train. We're trying to um, you know collect all the data sets and have a big pre-trained model. That we can easily fine tune on on the segments that we want to work on, right? Yeah. This is not available in Monalable yet, but th that's that's mm, that's something that we are working on. Okay. Yeah. Just to let you know. Um, but yeah, very good question. Very good question. Right, so it looks Did like it's see, still yeah. loading. Yeah. Oh, is it I done? Did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's complete. Uh, it's it's a quite quite big image. Uh, yeah. That's why? Yeah. So you see, and, and the resolution is. Is much better than, than than the model that we use for the whole body CT segmentation. Uh, if I if I remember correctly, it's like zero point four or zero point five, right? So you see there is the oh my god the um, predictions the smoothness of that is is much better than than the whole body CT segmentation. This means it needs more resources. Again, the flexibility of monolithic model. It's easy to train models. You have data set, you prepare it uh, as Monalibol will understand it. Uh, uh, you should be able to play with the different um, data sets and different um, um, structure, you know, uh, architectures, uh, network architecture, and, and different transformation in Monai. Okay. Uh, with that, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. I don't know if there are cool. more questions. Yeah, there are a few more. Uh, let's go through those really quickly and then we'll take off for, for lunch. For... Excellent. Um, so someone asked, can I run multiple inference servers on a single device at the same time? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, definitely. Uh, something that you can do, say, the only thing is, of course, bear in mind that we have, that, I mean, we, that you, you will have limited resources. So you can run as many services as you want. Uh, so you yeah. say, I want to start this server in port 8000. Import eight thousand. Um, sorry, just one sec. Let me copy this, which is the uh, yeah food city. Let me copy this. So food city will run uh, in eight thousand, and the other will run on a port eight thousand one. I need to open this and on the. Uh, Right. And, then, uh, and this would run in 8001. So this is the vertebra. So you have two servers, and you can uh, hear one, one is the um, whole body city segmentation. And if you change the port here, you will have the vertebra segmentation mode. Right. So you have more than one, two, three, the numbers that you want, that you want right? Um, but again, so you if you are running inference or you are training, in the end you have one, two, three GPUs. So depending on how big is the model, you may not be able to train all at the same time. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely you can do that. Cool. Um, there was one sort of longer one here. Um, so I can read it in multiple, it's multiple parts here, but as Andres mentioned changing the spacing in Monai label, the spacing, this is done with spacing D with a parameter Pix dimension. What are the units for Pix dimension? Millimeters? Yes, yes, millimeters. So let me let me show you okay. what I mean by that very quickly. Uh, so if you go to the Monai label, let's say uh, the full CT segmentation, I have a branch for that. So you go to sample apps, uh, the radiology, in lib, in the configs file, you have the segmentation full CT. Uh, you have all the, the 104. So Yes, the spacing here is defined as 1.5 millimeter for all the axes. 
So you can say, I want to train it on 0 0.5 or 0 0.8. So you only need to change this. And if you already have the data set prepared to run in Monai Label, you just change that and retrain the network. You don't even need to change um, I mean, nothing. If the, the, if the same 104 segments, only change that. And if you have the resources, you can train it. You have a, a, a big GPU to train on 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 because that's, that's the resolution that you need. You can do that. But yeah, the answer is in millimeters, yes. Cool, okay. Um, someone asked if there was any examples of key point detection. Key point detection. Yeah, I don't. Well, uh, I, I know there is a there is a um, a Monai zoo for detection, um, and it's been it's been implemented in Monai. Lab. I mean, if you have it in Monai zoo, in Monai bundle format, you can use it in Monai label as well. So there is. Uh, yeah. Let me see if I I think. I think it's something here. Um, I don't remember. It's, it's not included yet in the in the main branch, uh, yeah. but I know I know you have. Um, uh, let let me see. Maybe maybe it's in the. Just one second, very quickly, if, if I yeah. can find that. Uh, when I model zoom, in models, uh, um, yeah, land nodule CT detection. So do you have this uh, bundle here? That you can run uh, in in one label as well. Right? I know I know this is maybe maybe it's, it's, it it needs more more uh, changes if, if you want to, to use it on, on your city or on your city data set. Uh, but uh, the Monai bundle is there. So um, please, if if you have tried and there is, there is an issue that you face, don't hesitate to comment or open a discussion in the in the Monai bundle or the Monai model suit. Okay? Yeah. Um, another one was, um, is there an integrated way to review the already annotated data, which I think is a perfect uh, thing to show the reviewer, a multi-label reviewer maybe? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good point as well. Uh, so we have um, a nice contribution from, let me show you uh, an issue here, reviewer, from the Charity University Hospital. They have created uh, something that they call multi-label reviewer. And it's a plugin created in Slicer that works on top of Monai label, right? And the idea is they have a pool of annotators, expert annotators and junior annotators. So the Monai label reviewer basically allows you to uh, have different accounts for experts and juniors. And the experts, for instance, can um, review the annotations that were created by the um, junior annotators. And they can send them back to, to review the annotation, or they themselves, the experts, can approve or modify those, those annotations. So this is very, very interesting. Uh, and they have used in, they have used Monai label as, as the AI engine or the AI backend to, to for this um, a plugin. So it's very interesting and I mean, I'm yeah. happy that you asked this question. Yeah. Someone also asked if there was a tutorial or demo available earlier in 2022, and I'll link it, the video to it. We did a meetup um, after middle last year, so middle of the year, and the Monai reviewers uh, team presented on Monai label reviewer. So it was like a 20 to 30 minute presentation on Monai label reviewer. I will put that link in chat here in a moment when I can go find it. Um, and that way you can take a look at it and they talk about the different steps of it, what it looks like. Um, they're also looking for contributions to it because they're running out of funding. So people who are interested in uh, contributing back to reviewer as well, um, there would be much appreciated on their end. Hmm. Um, all right, two more questions, and then we'll we'll break. One was, does 3D Slicer extension support any methods for authentication if your Monolabel label server is running on a remote resource that requires it? Mm -hmm. Very good point. Um, we for the next release of Monolabel, uh, label, we will. Um, uh, provide the mechanism to do uh, login and authentication in Monai Lab using 3D Slicer and QPath. Right. So this is an open issue. And if you have a use case that you are interested, please don't hesitate to comment on, on the issue. Uh, and the idea is to deliver this for the version 0 0.7.0 .0 of Monai Lab. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then one last one. Um, so going back to sort of the spacing, 
issue. So someone asked, can you just use spacing D to bring a test data set into the same voxel size as your training data set? Or is that bad practice? I don't know if you know the answer to that one at all. It's sort of more. Can, can, can you repeat the question, sir? Yeah. Can you just, can you use spacing D to bring your test data set in the same voxel size as your training data set? Or is that not recommended? So I guess if they're different. So what, what so when you when you have let's say this data this uh, um, volume that the spacing is 0 0.9 0 0.9 0 0.9, so if you if you have trained the model to work on 1.5, basically what Monolabel does is it resamples this image or any of the images into the 1.5 millimeter space, right, and train the network on on that on that size of the images. Um, if you have a in an image that is bigger than 1.5 millimeter or has a resolution bigger than, than 1.5 millimeters, uh, basically all the images will be resampled to that space and, and perform inference or train on, on that on, on that size or that space.